In Creo Parametric, you can set up hole charts for standard holes that you want to use. In a previous video, we took a look at setting up a folder and consolidating all the PTC provided hole charts for your standard holes, for tapped holes, tapered holes, and also helical holes. In this video, we will take a look at creating your own custom hole charts. First, we need to go through some material about the structure of those files. Again, it is a .hol file as we discussed in the last video, and that's a text file. The .hol stands for hole. Be aware that Windows will think that that is a Microsoft Outlook holiday file. Just be sure to edit it in something like Notepad or Notepad++. Both those text editors work better than WordPad. When you go into your whole file, and it's recommended that you copy one of the existing ones, you're going to notice that the whole file is divided into two different sections. The first section is the header. You can see an example of the header for the iso.hol file that comes provided by PTC. And there are a few different areas at the top. You'll notice that this one lacks the thread name. And you use thread name if you have multiple whole charts that have the same series. So for example, if you have multiple ones that have an ISO thread series or a UNC head series, thread series, you're going to want to fill in a different thread name to distinguish between them. If you do not have thread name listed in the header, then it's going to use thread series as the name of the whole chart. And so then after your thread name, uh, actually, before your thread name, you're going to have the pro version. And that's the release version of Creo Parametric or Pro Engineer that the table was created for. And you'll notice that if you edit a bunch of your .hol files, the pro version will be listed as version 24. And so just a little background history. When the first version of Pro Engineer came out, it was version 1. They're trying to stick on a six month release schedule. So they would have version two, three, four, five, so forth and so on, up to about version 20. And then they switched over to calling them 2000i, 2000i squared. There's 2001. I'll just give you a little background. The latest production version, as I'm making this video, is Creo Parametric 7.0, which is version 44. Creo Parametric 1.0, that was version 38. If you go back to Wildfire 2.0, that was version 34. Hey, 24 means that this is suitable for any version of Pro Engineer or Creo Parametric that you will be using. Another line that you can have in the whole chart that you don't see in my example here is for the thread type. And if you use thread type, there are three different values that can have tap tapered or tapered underscore ISO. And then you'll have your tolerance class for the threads. So for example, this could be like 2B or 3B or H or some other different value. Table units can have one of two different values. It's either going to be inch or metric, which is kind of weird. I would expect that would be like inch or millimeters or maybe something like English or metric, but it kind of mixes up the two values. It's either inch or metric, usually in lowercase. And then you'll have depth ratio, and depth ratio is the value that's used to calculate the thread depth. And the depth ratio is the ratio of the drill depth to the thread depth. So when someone specifies the variable depth of the hole, it uses the depth ratio in order to calculate the initial value of the thread depth. And then call out format, by default that is blank and that's used if you want to have your own custom note format for the note that's automatically generated for a standard hole. And the next video in the series, we will take a look at creating your own custom call out, which is what I find that most people want to do when they create a custom hole chart. So again, those are the different lines that you will see in the header of the whole chart. You might not see thread name or thread type, but you can add those if you want. 
and then below the header, you're going to see the thread data for the chart. And there are a whole bunch of different columns over here. Let's go through them fairly quickly. So you have fastener ID, and this is the name of that particular hole as it will appear in the drop down list in the dashboard for you to select it. Then you have basic diameter, which is the diameter of the fastener. Then you have the value for thread. If your chart is in inches, then the value for thread will be threads per inch. If your chart is metric, then the value for thread is going to be the pitch of the threads. And then you're going to have tap underscore DR and tap underscore DEC. So that's for the standard size of the drill and the DEC is for the decimal size of the drill. You're also gonna have a column for the percent thread, which is the engagement of the faster threads. And then we're going to have clear DR close for the clearance drill for close clearances and then close DEC. That'll give the decimal size of that drill diameter for close clearances. And one thing I want to mention about these different values for things like your tap DEC and close DEC, those values cannot be overridden by default. There is a config.pro option. It is called whole underscore diameter underscore override. The default value for that is no, which means that by default, you're not going to be able to change the values for different quantities like tap DEC and close DEC when you are creating the whole feature. It has to be taken from the whole chart. So again, you can use that if you want to override the value. Similar to those ones you also have for free clearances, you have clear underscore dr underscore free to specify which clearance drill should be used and then free underscore dec which is the decimal value of that drill diameter and you have the same corresponding parameters for the medium clearances and those are clear underscore dr underscore med and med underscore dec and the same thing applies for that overriding the diameter values of free DEC and med underscore DEC, you're going to have to have whole diameter override set to a value of yes. All right, that said, let's go on to some of the more straightforward values that you will see in the whole chart. You're going to have columns for the diameter and depth of the counterbore, the diameter and depth, uh, or excuse me, the diameter and angle of a countersink. And the last two columns that you will see in here are for an exit countersink, uh, or as it's listed in here, the bottom countersink. And you can specify the values for the diameter and the angle of those. So now that we've gone through the format of this particular whole chart, let's take a look at creating your own custom one. Okay, here I am looking at my desktop. Here I have a Windows Explorer window open where we are viewing the holes folder that I created in the previous video. And I wanna create a new hole chart for the ISO standard for spark plug holes. And so the easiest way to create a new hole chart is to take one of the existing hole charts and copy it. And so since this will be based off of an ISO standard, here's ISO.HOL. I will right click on it and choose copy and then deselect right click and then, then let's choose paste and so here I have a copy of that particular file let's change the name and I will call this spark plugs to begin with and this again is just the name of the file this is not going to appear under this particular name in Creo parametric and then I want to edit it so let me right click on it this is giving me an option to edit with Notepad++. You want to avoid just double clicking on this because since it is assumed to be an Outlook holidays file, it'll automatically launch Outlook and that's not what you want. Let's right click on this again and I'm going to choose, where do we have open? There we have open with and I am going to open this with Notepad++. 
which is my preferred tool. And so here you see the format of the file. Up at the top, we have the table data. Here we have the thread data. And then you would just go about editing the different values in here. So for example, I've got the pro version. Then let's say I want to use that value for thread name. I'm going to enter in that particular value for the parameter. Let me use a couple spaces in order to line up with the next one. And for this one, maybe I'm going to call it by the name of the ISO standard. Maybe I want this to be ISO 28741. Here we have the thread series. Actually, for the thread name, maybe I want to call this something like, you know, spark plugs. And then maybe for the thread series, this is where I'll put the 28741 just to distinguish it from the other ISO holes that will come up in the dashboard. Okay, so let's see the next one that we have in here is the class. And for this particular standard, it's actually going to be a class of 6H. Table units is metric. That's good. I'll leave the default depth ratio. And in another video, I'll show you how to do a custom whole note format. And then we have the thread data in here. And maybe I'm just going to delete the ones that aren't relevant for this one. So for example, I know that the first one that would appear in this particular one is the M10-1. can delete all the rows that I don't need. And similarly, I would delete the other rows and then I would edit the different values. And so here are the different columns that are required. They need to have a value. So for example, this might not have a bottom countersink. So let's change the diameter to zero. I'll use some more spaces to have everything line up. You can change other different values in here based on the standard. And I've already done that in another file. Let me show you what that looks like. Let me close out of this one. I'll save it and then close and let me bring open. Here's one that's already finished. So you can see that I've got the thread name filled out over here. I've also added the thread type and specified a value of tap. And here I have my four rows based on the standard. I'd also change some of the other different values like these particular thread values are custom. We also have different values for the tap drill as specified. And there you can see I have the values of zero for the bottom countersink. And so this is all the information that I would need in order to have this as my custom whole chart. So now what I'm going to do is take this file that I've already pre-configured. I'm going to move it into that holes file. Then I'm going to launch Creo Parametric to show you how I can use this custom whole chart. Here I am in Creo Parametric. Let's create a new hole and let's change the type to standard. For locating it, I will place it on one of the datum points in my model. And let's go to the shape tab. Let's go to the thread type drop down list. And you can see that here I have the choice Spark, which is the thread name of the custom table that I just added to my holes folder. You can see that we have the value for the diameter. Let's use the drop down list and change to one of the other different pre configured holes. And that way you can see the values that are going to be specified in for here. And if I go to the note tab, here we have the standard note that would be generated for this one. And from the properties tab, we can see all the various different properties that are available for this particular hole as well. So in that way, you are able to use a custom hole chart in order to use your own particular values for holes. Another thing to note, if you are going to use your own custom hole charts, there is a config.pro option that you want to set. Let's go to File, and then Options, and then Configuration Editor. Let's click the Find button in order to locate it. I'm going to use the keyword search hole, and let's make this dialog box a little bit wider so it's easier to 
find the option that we're looking for. Let's make the column wider and then scroll down in here. And so first off, here's the whole diameter override. There's the default value. No, I already mentioned that one, but the one that you want to be aware of and you want to change if you are using your own custom whole charts is whole file resolution. And so the default value for that is replace with external. If you're using your own custom whole charts, you want to use use internal as the value of this config.pro option. What that means is that it will store the whole charts in the part model themselves because if you don't store your custom whole charts in the model themselves, then if you provide this model to someone else and they don't have those whole charts or they have whole charts with the same name but different values, it will replace with external. It will use the values for the whole charts that the other person has on their computer. If you are using custom whole charts, you want to set whole file resolution to use internal Let's add change that one. And then you're going to want to export this to your standard config.pro file to make sure that whenever you're using these custom whole charts, it will copy those whole charts into the model themselves. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.